What's going on, Halo fans? Luke the Notable here, and welcome to the Halo Infinite 100 Drops. In this video, you'll be seeing my first 100 games of Halo Infinite. This one here was played about two minutes after it was released. I know I'm kind of known for Minecraft now, and before that, Fortnite, but if you look back far enough, you'll see I was a Halo legend. Who am I kidding? I'm still a Halo legend, and I'm gonna prove that in these 100 games. I won my first game of Halo Infinite with 19 kills and 6 deaths, and luckily for you, there's gonna be 99 more. And here's the next one, hopping into game to capture the flag. Do I have to explain capture the flag? I will, just for the Call of Duty players. There's a flag, and you have to capture it. And if the enemy team tries to get your flag, you try to stop them. Was that simple enough? Listen guys, a lot of people that watch my channel these days think a first person shooter is Minecraft Bed Wars. I gotta make sure to explain everything. Anyway, now that I've lost 90% of my fans, let's get on to the next one. I won this one easy. More capture the flag game three, but this time it's one flag, so there's only one. I know math is hard. Capturing a single flag without having to defend your own sounds easy, but not when I'm defending it. Funny thing about this game is I didn't even realize we were playing one flag until I rushed their side of the map and realized there wasn't a flag to capture. However, now I'm on offense and have a rocket launcher launcher with invisibility. Good luck everyone else. After murdering everyone, I took the flag and then continued murdering everyone. That's a pretty good strategy. Yeah, pretty much single-handedly won the game for my team here. How notable. The other team was also not very notable. This one didn't even know how a man cannon worked. All right, I'm gonna stand here and punch it. <laughs> More capture the flag game four because there's only four game modes. That's not a joke. On a big map like this, simply having a weapon with longer range can make you pretty much unkillable. Yeah, most of this game, I just sat outside the enemy's base and watched them helplessly try to take me down with their pistols. Then later I sat inside the enemy's base and watched them helplessly try to take me down with their pistols. I also absolutely dominated with a ghost, which is somehow like the best vehicle in the game. It's just insane. Won the game and celebrated by killing myself. It's Halo tradition. You can tell how deep the armor customization system is by how diverse the Spartans are in game five. That's a joke because most of the colors and other customizable options are locked behind a paywall. You know, I will say though, I was a little harsh on Halo Infinite when it came to the customizables. I don't agree with how it all works. I wish I could choose my color, just a simple one. But let's be honest, it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna go into it too much with the armor customization system. I'm not entirely happy with it, but at the end of the day, the gameplay is amazing, and I'm happy enough with the gameplay that I kinda don't care anymore. In the Halo 300 drops, I literally said that hardcore players don't even customize their armor. You don't need good armor to win. I mean, hey, look at this default squad here. Playing some oddball game six, and I'm gonna take it upon myself to never pick up the ball once and just slay. My team held my balls very well and I gave the enemies the hammer. I went 37 and 4 in this game. I killed so many players I'm definitely gonna need therapy. Smashed all these players mostly with the hammer. They don't know how the radar works. It was easy. Do want to say I really wish I got a little more XP for absolutely slaughtering this team. I actually got just as much as they did for getting slaughtered which is kind of weird. You know in the ancient times of Halo 3 if you wanted XP you had to win a game and you got nothing for losing. Oh well. More oddball game 7. There's slim pickings for game modes in Halo Infinite. That just means I get to touch balls more. Though in this match, the enemy team had the perfect ball grabbing strategy, holding it down in the sniper tower. Halo's crazy, man. At this point, the game had been out for like an hour and people are already on those pro strats. However, my team didn't understand that the ball is safest in the sniper tower and ran away from it. The other team was just better and I got my first loss of Halo Infinite. But hey, it had to happen sometime. You know, a lot of this was all still very fresh for me. I was checking out items that I've never seen before. This is the stalker rifle and I really like it. You can kill an enemy with three shots. I didn't do it much in this game, but it's satisfying if you can make that happen. I feel like it's one of those weapons that might be easier to use on a mouse and keyboard, but Halo's meant to be played on a controller, and if you think differently, you're wrong. Please, oh please, be salty about aim assist in my comments. I live for mouse player's tears. No, really, I mean it. Go down to the comments, write something mean about how awful controller players are. You can't dislike the video anymore, so that's all you can pretty much do. We won, because my controller aimed for me. I don't even have to touch the thing. Playing one flag captures the flag game nine. I just killed their sniper, and we've taken their flag. It's not looking good. Where'd my flag? go. Oh, a nose, I'm being killed. Then I was the sniper and didn't even give him a chance to get to our side. One did, but he got popped. One did take our flag and got it pretty far outside the base, but I had a rocket launcher and a mangler, and I got myself my first Halo Infinite overkill. Do I have to show you anything else? I mean, we won that one. Game 10, I made myself cyan. I wanted to be blue, but I don't get to choose. Of course, I was integral to the success of our team.
team here. I got a nice flag return for our score. I didn't really run the flag, but I'm pretty good at knowing when to pull it, and I'm pretty good at defending. Like I said earlier, it's pretty hard to capture our flag when I'm defending it, and that held true here. Good job, 75% cyan, 25% purple team. How classic. I joined game 11 late. It looks like Bobby Bagels 420 needs me. Ball guy hid in the sniper tower, and I did my best to keep creepy camo kids off of him. We started a great setup, my teammates caught on, and now it's comeback time. Pretty much did the same thing in the final round of oddball, and yeah, no one could touch us. And they pretty much didn't touch us. In the end, we won this one 100 to 1. Playing some strongholds, game 12, this one's very stressful and also a little bit complicated, so I'll do my best to explain. But first, check out this nice triple kill that I got. Essentially, there's three objectives on the map, and you have to hold at least two of them to score points. Ultimately, like a lot of Halo game modes, it simply boils down to who got the most kills. It's hard to capture a point when you're exploded. Basic but biggest tip is always try to capture the middle stronghold B. B is in the middle. Do I really have to further explain it? Haven't you read The Art of War? Having the middle stronghold makes getting the side strongholds a lot easier. Here, while capturing A, the enemy already started capturing C. I slayed a lot in this one, but it wasn't enough. They held B longer and won. Ah, oh, good. Back to Slayer game 13. See, that's a game mode I understand. Die! Die! I, of course, played exceptionally well, but, you know, I, like, I play this game for money. If I didn't, you probably wouldn't even be here. Oh, nice triple. I was 24 and 7, but it was all still coming down to one kill. We got it. Not that it really matters. We get the same XP. Game 14, I joined late again. This time, capture the flag, and we're already down one. Let's see what I can do. I think my downfall here was not running the flag for my team. I kind of expected them to, and they didn't. Oh, I was slaying great. They definitely should have run the flag for for me, but they just didn't. And in the end, we lost because of it. In Capture the Flag, generally, there's a moment you need to seize if you want to capture a flag successfully, and I didn't do that very well in this game and ended up dead. Game 15, playing some oddball, and the enemy definitely knows what they're doing, but maybe I can find a way to outslay them. My slaying was really great in this game. I went 15 and 6. If someone was on my side of the map, they weren't getting out alive. My ball-holding teammates were not as good, though. Here we got the ball near the sniper tower. Dude picks it up and runs to the middle. Listen, guys, I couldn't pick up the ball. I was the only one on my team not horribly negative. If I didn't kill, who would? And yeah, when your whole team goes horribly negative, you generally lose. Enjoying myself, game 16, one flag capture the flag on whatever map this is. At one point, we pulled the flag and I was able to stay alive long enough to let my team get on a mongoose. They brought it home, we won the game. That was a good one. Game 17, playing a little Slayer and I absolutely dominated. Got myself a killing frenzy, which is 10 kills without dying for you uncultured platoon players. I'll say one thing my team could have done better, including myself, was better control of the power weapons. Here we only needed one more kill to win and I felt I could get it but didn't. Uh oh. Then, despite going 22 and 4, we still lost this match tragically by one point. Back to oddball, I guess. No, it's it's not getting boring. I, I don't wish I had more game modes. I'm telling you right now, I should not be the one holding this ball. I had sword. I should be on defense not holding the ball. No one else would. You see, don't get me wrong. I like oddball. It's classic. It's simple. You just hold the ball. That's how you win. But, you know, holding the ball kind of sucks. Yeah, but that doesn't suck as much as being ready for a pulse with your grapple, but then failing it and falling to your death. Eventually, my teammates realized I was the one slaying out everyone, and they let me do just that. So we won the game. What more do you want from me? Only died three times when I was holding the ball, just saying. One flag, capture the flag again on this map. I play it so often, I really should start to learn the name. I've done it. I've grabbed the flag. Dad will be so proud. Yeah, that's basically how the whole game went in Capture the Flag. To get a flag, you need a moment, and I never let one happen. Playing Strongholds, game 20, and remember, I said it's good to hold B, and you can see why here. B's in the middle, so it has a great view of a lot of the map. I have some really nice angles on both A and C. From this angle, I can directly shoot at C from B. B is always the way. Check out this scenario. We've got B and C, so I pretty much know they're going to be coming from A. It's just better positioning altogether. Here from B, I was able to slide into A, and I didn't stop the capture, but I was able to get it right back. Check this clip out. Capping B while covering C. That is efficient. Smart plays and some good slaying got us this win. That's how you stay notable. Playing oddball game 21 again. All of these matches were recorded when this game was technically in beta, so I'm trying not to be too critical of the lack of game modes. But honestly, if this releases and there's not more, oh, there's gonna be riots. So I personally have a severe life-controlling addiction to Halo, but I can imagine people that don't have that, you know, might put the game down if there weren't more game modes. Also, another weird critique while I'm at it. Why isn't the friends list alphabetized? Capture L flag game 22. I really tried my best to stop the enemies, but they were just simply better. Timing's everything in Capture the Flag. 
lag, and despite me slaying incredibly well, our team could never pull anything together. Times like this, I'm really craving a free-for-all playlist. Just let me play with myself, I've been doing it since I was 12. I will say I did Ninja Guy with the Overshield for the Achilles Spine Medal, that was a notable moment. Can't play free-for-all, but I can play Big Team Battle, and this was my first game. It was Capture the Flag, but I mostly just killed people. Why go for the objective if you don't get more XP? It was fun, but Big Team Battle always is, you knew that. Got a chance to drive the tank this game, but it was used as an Uber for several years and wasn't in good shape. And the enemy tank killed me pretty much immediately. Also got my hands on the enemy's wasp, another fun vehicle, but the game ended before I could have too much fun with it. All I did, and I really mean this, all I did game 24 was sit in the base and snipe. It's a big problem, people like me, but you know, if they wanted me to play the objective, they'd give me more points for winning but they don't, so I'm not gonna. And it's not like you can even validly complain. If someone on your team doesn't play the objective and you lose, it's not like you get less points. It literally doesn't matter. Game 24 serves as my protest to the system. You may not agree with it, but honestly, I don't care. Chilling in the back game 25, trying out the stalker rifle on mouse and keyboard. Yeah, it's definitely more accurate with a mouse. I'm just not very good with a mouse and I'm really not that ashamed. I just killed people all of game 26. I was apathetic to the whole objective, really. Take my flag, I could care less. I would definitely play the objective if it mattered, like if I was playing with friends, or if I got more XP for actually winning a game, you know, like how it should be. But we don't, and that's very sad. I wish it was different, and maybe one day it will be. I do have hope. Oh, nice overkill. Probably only got that because I wasn't playing the flag. You know what though, in game 27, I'm definitely gonna be playing the objective because I'm in the arena playlist. This is the ranked mode in Halo, and I decided to give it a shot. There's a few different changes in the arena, battle rifle starts, and no motion tracker, which overall make it a much tougher game. You need strategy, you need teamwork, you need skill. And if you don't have that, well, you're gonna lose. It's the only playlist in Halo right now where winning matters and I could definitely feel it. It was a different atmosphere altogether. But it was my first game, I was unranked and I was playing against people who weren't necessarily up to my skill level. So I played pretty well. I won my first game, but if the ranking system's any good, my next one should be a lot harder. Uh, gotta say, it, it wasn't. Playing regular old Slayer and even in this ranked mode, it was pretty easy. You play 10 placement matches before you actually get a rank, so I'm not even really surprised that the second one was still easy for me. However, while it was easy for me, it wasn't for my team. I had a 2.0 KD in this match, but we still lost. And I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but here's the thing I really love about Halo Infinite's ranked system. The system takes into account more than just your win or loss. If you lose but play well, you won't go down in rank. If you wanna actually rank up, you need to win. But if you play well and some guy on your team just does awful and loses the game for you, that doesn't matter, you're not gonna be ranked down because of that. I'd consider myself a pretty good player, but at the end of the day, it's a team-based game, and you're only really as strong as your weakest link. One player can make the difference. In this game, I led my team in captures and had the highest KD. We still lost, but I won't rank down for that. Though, uh, yeah. Game 30, we... we got wrecked. It was a game of strongholds and someone on our team quit, so when it's 3 versus 4, there's pretty much no hope. I also believe that's taken into account, though, at least it was in Halo 5, so even though I lost this game and only went 8-8, eight and eight, I probably wouldn't de-rank. Oh yeah, we got slapped hard. Back at a game 31 with a full team though, and that definitely helps. It was a close game though, the ranking system's definitely dialing it in, but it should if it's a good ranking system. Really close here, one minute left, tie game, and I got a clutch double kill to stop the flag from being captured. Sudden death, and the team came together perfectly to control the map and pull the flag. Teamwork, skill, and strategy. We had them all, and we won. My battle rifle shot was feeling better every single game. I gotta say, I really like the arena settings. I'm a sucker for competitive Halo though, I know this isn't for everyone, but I like it, and you know what? That's all that matters. And again, the fact that the system takes into account more than just wins and losses just feels a lot more fair. I truly feel like I earned my rank. This game was close, but we earned the win too. Good game. Gotta say though, game 33 played some really good guys. They were working together well. Had a few good plays on them, but yeah, they were just way better. Those good plays didn't really matter. Oh, we all went negative. They definitely deserved to win. Likewise with game 34, these dudes, they were just good. Like, one would go behind cover, another would come to help supreme teamwork. I do want to say my mic was on the entire time I was playing arena, but no one ever wanted to talk to me. The best part about this game is I got six kills and nine deaths. That's kind of funny, I guess. Playing oddball game 35, and we got off to a pretty perfect start. I was fairly certain we were going to win this game. We were even able to win the first round entirely, but you know, it's not over till it's over. I do have to applaud the ranking system. It was a very fair match. A lot of back and forth the whole time. However, in round three where it mattered, they just did a better job of holding the sniper tower. We couldn't touch them. And 
and they won. All right, here we go. Last placement game. After this one, I'll know what rank I am. It was Basic Slayer, and I got off to a pretty terrible start. The match was still close, but by mid-game, I had twice as many deaths as kills, four and eight. Flipped a switch, and from then on, I played pretty smart. Ended the game, nine and nine. I know that's just an even KD, but, you know, I didn't hurt my team. I was able to rank Diamond 1. It's not the highest rank, but I think with a little grinding, I can get there. And, spoiler alert, I do get there. This is footage from the Arena 100 drops. Yep, you heard me right. I'm gonna be playing 100 games of only Arena, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. After my 10 games of Arena, I went back to the casual modes, and, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I'm working with. We were playing some Basic Slayer, and, yeah, I basically just slayed everyone. I was gonna get a perfection, mostly because these guys weren't playing, but right at the end, got hit with a rocket and wasn't able to survive the encounter. Perfection would have been nice. Not like my medals are tracked anywhere or anything like that. One flag capture the flag on the map that I still can't recall the name of for whatever reason. And I'm about to help my flag carrier. I've got camo and rockets. He died because he was really good. So now I'm running the flag. Then I died and my team had tunnel vision on the flag. All right, we missed the first capture. That's cool. They won't get it from us because I've got the snipe. My team started leaving, but I still had the sniper rifle. So there was still no way these guys were touching our flag. Got myself a triple kill here and would have had an over if this one wasn't in a ghost. Without me, my team definitely would have lost, but they wouldn't have cared because they were all bots because my whole team left. You're welcome. We tied in the end, not like it matters. All right, team, it's time for some oddball. Oh, I guess that guy uh, didn't want to play oddball. It's a pretty regular thing that people will quit out if Slayer isn't the game mode. It's a huge problem, and it could be fixed with a social Slayer playlist, but apparently that's too hard. So in this game of oddball, because pretty much the whole team and most of my team quit out, I was playing against three bots and one real guy. I will say it's nice that it's not just an empty lobby here, but the bots are really, really bad. I was able to get a kill tech here with virtually no effort. Got that 30 and 0 perfection because my enemies didn't have souls. More oddball game 40. For now, I'm playing against people, but we'll see as the game goes on. It was a fairly even game, I'd say, but near the end of round one, I pulled off a very clutch overkill to secure the victory. And I think after that, the morale of the enemy was just in the toilet, so we slapped him round two and won the whole game. I still do not know what this map is called, and I think that's because I still don't really like it, but I'm playing it, so here we are. I played very very well. My team were experts at dying. You know how this goes. We lost. Maybe I'm just going insane because I really like this map, but still can't remember its name. Probably should go get checked. Hey, nice triple. I racked up 26 kills in this one and only died two times. And on top of that, I also got a flag capture. I was the MVP. Playing Strongholds game 43. It's my least favorite game mode by far. My problem with the game mode is the complexity. I understand it. I've been playing Strongholds since Halo 5, but to new players, it's just confusing. Slayer, you slay the enemy. Capture the flag, you capture a flag. Oddball, you hold a ball. In Strongholds, you must strategically capture points on the map. Points are only awarded to control two of the three capture points. More points are awarded to the third capture point. You can stop points immediately if you start capture one or two of the enemy's three points. The game goes to 20 points, unless you're in 18 I'd prefer King of the Hill. It's much more simple. You just stand in the spot, and that's it. Why's it gotta be more complicated than that? We lost by one point. I seriously couldn't care. Had an incredibly competent team. Game 44, we worked together to hold the ball well. And I know I'm not playing Strongholds right now, but I want to circle back to my point on Strongholds. It really shouldn't be in quick play. It's too complicated. Strongholds is a game mode that requires a lot of teamwork and coordination. Not that Oddball doesn't, but a lot more than Oddball. And when people are trying to just play a quick match in quick play, you need simple objectives, like hold a ball. Though I really doubt Strongholds is going anywhere. This game only has four game modes. They really can't afford to lose another one. Game 45 was recorded on a brand new day. This is my warm-up game, and I didn't do too hot. In my warm-up games, I like to use a lot of the assault rifle. It just kind of dials in that tracking. Pro tip. My KD was even, but that doesn't matter because my KD... AD isn't tracked anywhere, and we won the game, but that doesn't matter either, because we don't get any more XP for winning. Halo T-Ball, everyone. You know, I've definitely had my critiques of Halo Infinite in this video so far, but one thing that I really like, and it's a big thing, are the weapons. I had a ton of fun with the Hydra this match. Right here, got a classic explosive Halo moment. And I had even more explosive moments on the same map in game 47. Here, using my pistol and the Hydra, I was able to get myself an overkill. The Hydra's amazing, and honestly, it's just so much fun. Great weapon. Got three captures in this one, and I never died. Nice perfection. Playing Strongholds game 48, I don't really want to, but then again, I don't really have a choice. I do have a choice to not show it though, so I'm skipping to game 49 where I'm playing Capture the Flag. The notes say we beat the hell out of them, one double kill, and that's very accurate. And I don't want to say what I wrote down for game 50, because I honestly use some very rude language to describe my team. Halo has many insults, it could be any one of them. They had good hog driving, I'll give them that. Game 51, the enemy team became bots pretty quickly, so, you know. 
We won. I'm starting to wonder what percentage of this video is one flag capture the flag on the map that I can't name, and I feel like it's pretty high. And game 53 is stronghold, so I'm gonna skip through it out of protest. Game 54, I had three doubles and three sprees, and we would have won this game too if the worst guy on our team was never born. However, I'm not gonna blame anyone in game 55. It was a rare close match in the quick play playlist. It was simply just some great back and forth capture the flag gameplay, a lot of fun. In the end, it was insanely close, and we lost, but hey, I still had fun. And if you'd like to take away all of the enemy's fun, just use a ghost, it makes you unkillable. Plasma pistols don't even work anymore. Play in some stockpile game 57 in big team battle, and it's bad. Like, whoever made this game mode, what were you thinking? Seriously, I mean it. Like, who designed this? That's all I'm gonna say about that, because it's not even worth it, it's never gonna change. And that's modern Halo, get used to it. Stronghold's game 59 won't be showing that. I think the whole element of people not playing the objective in Halo Infinite is amplified in big team battle. There's only so much one Spartan can do. And you know, I can't help but think that'd be different if we got more XP for winning. Hey, look who finally showed up, the Tours! We only have one controller though, so I gave it to Tours and I played on mouse and keyboard and I'm just bad with it. I didn't even care that I played bad, I was just happy to get one in with the Tours. We just played that one, but I promise you, she'll be back for a lot more Halo later. In this game of Capture the Flag, I got all of the captures for my team, and the only reason is because I'm making a video. Got two caps and played solid defense. Easy win. Oh look, I'm playing Strongholds. Oh look, it's the next game. I was absolutely laying down the pain, but my team wouldn't grab the ball, which is just frustrating. When a player has battle rifle and sniper, they really shouldn't be touching the ball, but I had to. Don't get me wrong, I'm not above holding the ball. I love touching balls. Really, I do. Yeah, in this game, I handled the ball so well, I got the straight ball and metal, but none of that's tracked, so who even cares? Does have a cool sound though. Straight balling. Playing with Tours again, game 66, I told you she'd be back. Also, Taco Bell Dogs, you may have seen him in some other videos. And this is Mater, my brother and thumbnail artist, but you can't tell by his name. Halo, like many other games, is a lot more fun with friends. I'm sure many of you watching this video right now have some fond memories of split-screen Halo. I played Halo with a full team in the next few games, and it was the most fun I'd had in a very long time. No, we weren't the best team, but you know, we were together, and that's what made it so fun. Back to Slayer, game 67. My friends here are all pretty much casual Halo players, and that's really all they want to play. I don't know why we don't have a Social Slayer playlist. It kind of just baffles me and all of them that Social Slayer wouldn't be in the game from day one. That just seems like such a basic thing to have. Anyway, I got 30 kills and 6 deaths in this game. We won. It was a team effort. See, that's a joke because they know their professional Halo friend Luke carried them. Playing a little oddball, game 68, and did my best to try to call the shots. Effectively, I just forced them to hold the ball while I defended them. It's a winning strategy. We absolutely slapped this team. Ball holding is always better with friends. We all played some big Team Battle Game 69, and I have no idea why it puts you with other people in your squad. I want to play with my friends. You know, I know this is Game 69, and normally that's really important, but it's Strongholds, and I've got to stick to my guns. We're going to the next one. Oh, look, it is Strongholds again. Time to spit on the ground with malice. Game 71 is a match of stockpile, and the only thing I really want to show is this almost overkill. I think I would have got it if I hit the rocket reload a little faster. My friends agree that stockpile's a terrible game mode. Stop trying to be creative and just let us play Slayer. Awesome, Game 71. 72 is Slayer. Better savor it, because you don't know when we're getting it again. That's not a joke. It's literally something we said when we were playing together. Slayer would come up, and we would think, oh, awesome. We get to have some fun before going back to Strongholds. Skipping straight to Game 74, because Game 73 was Strongholds. You understand. This is our second time playing Oddball together on this map, and we had a pretty good strategy going. That is the only strategy that really works on this map. Holding the Sniper Tower. We lost the first round, but bodied them in the second, so it's all coming down to the last round. It was a very tight game. The ball was going back and forth literally the entire time. Near the end of the match, Mater was holding the ball in bottom mid, and I went into pro gamer mode, killing everyone around him. On comms, I just told him to run, got the overkill, and saved the day. 48 and 8, it was a team effort. Game 75 was Slayer, and we started off really well. I got myself another overkill in the first five kills. I also got six separate double kills, an absolute slaying machine. It's because Tors was on my team, I just wanted to impress her. I like her. I also believe that if you're having fun, you just play better, and I was playing the new Halo game with my friends, so yeah, of course I was having fun. We won the game because someone on our team plays this game for money. To kick off game 76, I got 10 kills and no deaths, and for Slayer, that's pretty helpful. Despite that, it was still a very close game. Our two teams were fighting hard. We just didn't get the power weapons all that often. We lost in the end, but we were just glad to be not playing Strongholds. Capture the flag, game 77. They got the first cap, but we answered right back with one of our own. Later in the game, both flags got stolen, but I had a nasty clutch triple kill to get our flag back, and at the same time, we scored. 
board. Didn't stop him from capping right back, and now it's tied up two to two. Next one wins. Then there were some massive plays. I got a nice double kill on their side of the map. Mater then got the enemy flag to our side of the map, and we stopped the enemy team from returning. As a last effort, the enemies tried to pull our flag, but with a nice nade and some assault rifle work, I got both of them. We got the return and the win. Good game. Not playing with my friends anymore, but they'll come back before the video's over, I swear. Playing some arena, this time some strongholds, and even in arena, you gotta know, that means I'm skipping. More arena, game 79, I was just feeling it, you know, it's fun. And with the ranking system being so amazing, all in all, it's just a really great experience. This one was pretty close in the end. I went a little negative, minus two. Felt bad for letting my team down. I will say, part of the reason I played bad is my settings, and I don't mean to sound like a noob for saying that. The entirety of these Halo Infinite 100 drops are played in 90 field of view, which is fine and casual, but field of view can be boosted to 120, and it's a significant difference. There's a couple other things that I changed that I'll definitely talk about in the Arena 100 drops, but basically what you need to know is I was playing at a disadvantage here. Game 81, I played another game of Arena because I hate myself, but you won't see it because it's Strongholds. Truthfully, I was just warming up real good because I was going to play with Tors soon, wanted to be frosty. This was a game of Capture the Flag, but one of our guys left, so there really wasn't much hope. Miraculously, we got a capture, but I think that's mostly because the other team just felt bad for us. I slayed good though, feeling warmed up for playing with Tors. Oh, there she is! Yes! Mater's here too. I actually bought them all the games so they would play with me. Yeah, uh, I've spent $360 on Halo Infinite, and, uh, you know, I don't care, because I'm playing with my friends right now. Realistically, you could say that about every game. They're all more fun with friends. Prison is more fun with friends. They would have played the game with me for free on December 8th anyway, but I wanted to give them early access, and hey, I play this game for money. Anyway, we had a very fun session of playing some quick play together, and this time it was oddball. You know, normally when I play oddball in a Halo 100 drops, I do a lot of ball jokes, but I played oddball so much, I figured they'd get boring. You know, the free-to-play Roblox Halo knockoff has the same amount of game modes as Halo Infinite. Just let that sink in. Also, better customizable options. There, I said it. You know, I will say the graphics in Halo Infinite are slightly better than Roblox. I gotta give them that. Game 85, we were playing some stockpile. I don't really like this game mode, but one positive is all the Spartans are pushed to one area, and because of that, in this one, I got my Myself a killtacular. I don't really like the game mode because it's just kind of lame. And if you've ever played it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Game 86, I was actually playing the objective with Tors, but we were the only two teammates of 12 doing so, so we got exploded. Near the end, the team came together, got the slay on them, and got the last flag capture with a warthog. I was dead when we won. They'll remember me. Game 87, I was playing some strongholds in big team battle. I wasn't gonna show any of this, but I did get two separate overkills, so I'm gonna show those. I'd still much prefer King of the Hill, even in big team battle. It's just a much more simple objective. Halo 3 had big team King of the Hill, and that stuff was really fun. But those are the two overkills. Now it's time to move on. Game 88, we were down 0-2 to two and capture the flag, so I decided that, yeah, now it's time to clutch. I flipped the switch and started killing. I slayed exceptionally well, which you need in capture the flag, and we got two quick flag captures. However, almost Almost immediately after that, they took our flag, I went down, and now it's all up to Tor- Oh dang, now Tors is dead. We lost, still had fun, and got the same XP as the red team. Ha! Straight to game 90, cause 89 was the game mode we don't talk about. We out here playing Slayer, which is probably all we would've played if we had the option. Honestly, at this point, I just wanna play more Roblox Halo. Still with the squad, playing Capture the Flag game 91. I will say, we were holding them very well, it was 0-0 zero to zero for most of the game. The whole time, both teams were trying to get a moment, and I had a couple double kills, but that was about it. They beat us by two in the end. Mwah. Game 92 was Stronghold, so I decided to play some Roblox Halo instead. It's better. Playing Oddball Game 93, and I let the squad know to just stay out of my way. I'd handle it for them. And you know what? Defend I did. By the time this game was over, I had 60 kills. The squad understood. I mean, if I had a guy getting 60 kills on my team, I'd just let him do his thing. He's obviously got some issues to work out. In the end, we won, and yeah, it was very much a team effort. Alrighty, that was the last game with my friends. Let's see what we're playing now. Ugh, this map again. This this time it was just regular old Slayer on this map, whatever it's called. I'm not sure why it's not in big team battle. It's kind of small for four versus four. You guys want to do a little joke with me? I think it'll be fun. If anyone down in the comment section tries to tell me the name of this map, tell them that they're wrong, even if they're right. I don't know why, but I think that'd be funny. Yeah, man, I don't know what you saw, but I'm pretty sure the name of that map is Blue Rocket, but I could be wrong. Game 95, I got strongholds and a guy wasn't even playing 
and honestly, I wish I was him, because Strongholds is terrible. But it looks like in game 96, we lucked out, some of the enemy team quit, so we get to play against some bots. Woohoo, this is, uh, it's not fun. If it's not Slayer, people leave, and it's a problem that I didn't really notice until I made this video. You might also notice that the enemies are yellow instead of red. It's a pro tip I found, makes them a lot easier to see. Too bad it took me to the 90s to figure that out. I set this game aside to talk about the yellow enemies, because I didn't really play well, I'm in control here. I was plus one in this Slayer match, which means I didn't hurt my team, but for me, that's not playing well. Played real good. Game 98 got myself four separate triple kills. Would have been nice to get an over, though. Again, I'm not above grabbing the ball if I need to, but if my team needs me to slay, you know I'm gonna do that. Despite how well I was playing, they still got a massive run on us with the ball. We weren't able to recover, and we lost. What's this? Something different? Oh, it's Fiesta! Fiesta is a classic mode in Halo where you start with random weapons. It's super fun. I have no idea why it wasn't in the game to begin with. And at least right now, it's not in the game anymore, which I really don't understand. What would be better for a new Halo game than a mode where you can play with all of the new weapons? It just makes sense, but it's not in the game anymore. No, no, no. What the people really want is to play Capture the Flag on Blue Rocket 300 times in a row. Kinda just wanted to get this one over with, so game 100, I ran up and just captured the flag and while I was juggling a bot stole it what what no yeah by the end of this one 75% of the enemies were bots the other guys quit out to try to find slayer good game arena hunter drops coming soon stay notable